Man, that's a good sounding motor. That's exactly what you want to hear on the first fire. So we got the motor back from Detroit. Uh, we unpackaged everything, a little bit of spit polish here and there to get some of this assembly lube and, and the smudges off. But otherwise, everything looked beautiful. Uh, I really like these port covers that they shipped it with too. Uh, I need to find a place for them in the house somewhere. Oh, right here you can check the Cometic head gaskets peeking out a little bit. And if you're wondering what happened to my old block pistons and rods, don't worry. They found a beautiful home in a, in a friend's living room. I had everything cleaned up, powder coated, and I built this nice table to offset a small bit of the build cost. It came out really beautiful. And if I didn't already have a Viper engine block table, everyone should have one. Uh, I definitely would have kept it for myself. So in addition to the motor, a few other goodies came in. Uh, we got a new oil cooler. We got new coolant lines, new oil lines. Got all new hardware and new gaskets for the exhaust, front to back. And I figured after you know seven years, the motor and trans mounts were due for a replacement. So we got a new set of both. Uh, with all that in hand, we were ready to drop in uh, the motor back where it belongs. So we started off by going over all the thermal wrapping on the hydraulic lines and areas we want to protect and, and we now have access to. A lot of this was done back on um, the first heads cam install. So this was kind of just a once over to make sure things haven't come undone. We cleaned up all the mating surfaces on the exhaust and we're beginning to start to drop the big lump back into its home. I got to give Morgan uh, over at Viper Exchange a big shout out here. That guy could probably do all this stuff blindfolded at this point. He's worked on pretty much every Viper that I've owned uh, to this point and is literally the only person aside from myself that I trust to touch my car. And he made very short work of the install as usual. Uh, and he knows how OCD I am and my expectations and, and he always meets them. So Morgan, if you're watching this, thank you, sir. So, got the motor dropped in. We moved back under the car to get the flywheel and the clutch installed. My OEM clutch was is almost new. This is actually the replacement. This is the second clutch that I'm on. I killed the first one at the drag strip. Um, so there's no reason to replace it again. Uh, some people wonder why I didn't throw in an upgraded clutch. But from a clamping capacity standpoint, the stock twin disc is more than enough for, for the torque levels the car is making. In fact, I've seen people hold about a thousand wheel on, on the stock clutch. The only thing that it doesn't like um, is slippage. So if you're kind of a chronic clutch rider, if you will, or you plan on drag racing and cutting some you know, good 60 foots, good short times with it, you definitely want to upgrade. The stock one is going to go away in around three or four passes. Uh, from around 5k and ask me how I know. So when I undoubtedly kill the shift pads and the synchros and the transmission again and need another rebuild, I probably will throw in an nth moto triple disc carbon. But it, you know, it's not because of the power the car is making, like I mentioned, it's just mostly for the increase in, in, in the shift speed uh, and the reduction of weight. It's a much, much lighter clutch uh, than the stalker. So Got the trans back in with the new mount, the drive shaft was reinstalled, the aero panel and diffuser was put back in place. So now all that was left was to install the plug wires, button up some of the hoses, reinstall the X brace. Uh, we filled all the fluids back up, burped the cooling system and we were ready for the first fire.
Well, she's dirty as all hell, but she's all mine. Let's get to it. She's a rowdy one now. So I took I took a few spins around the block uh, with Morgan to check it out and make sure everything was kosher. Um, and what was really interesting to me is everybody was saying that, you know, I was gonna have shit drivability because of the big cam. Now watch this. No throttle. I'm just gonna come off the clutch. Car is absolutely perfect. It's perfect drivability. I was really, really surprised because that was really the only thing that I was worried about. I was worried that it was gonna become, you know, a pain in the ass to drive, even though it sounds badass and it's fast as all hell. But first gear, no throttle. I can just creep the car out. And she just creeps around in first, man. I know it sounds silly that that's what excites me, but you know, for me, the drivability of the car and the ability to just hop in and, and use it and then not drive like shit is more important than power. So I'll, I'll make some hits for you guys later, but that's what I'm excited about right now. I wanna go home and wash this thing. It's, it's super dirty. I never let him wash it.